Following this week's by-elections that didn't go too well for neither the Tories nor the Labour Party, essentially everybody was a win winner, which means everybody was a loser, there's been a backlash on both parties. Usually you only have it on one side because the other side will perform well. The backlash and the division inside the Tory party is also completely chaotic, with the likes of Jacob rees Smog coming out to now urge Rishi Sunak and the government to stop with socialism. I mean, it's not a big ask, is it? So this is mostly about the, uh, all the policies that have been going on for a while inside this so-called conservative establishment. And people like Jacob rees have been very patient. They remain inside the Tory party, mostly because they want to continue to have their influence. And a lot of times it has worked. But at this point, it might just be words. They don't listen to people like Jacob rees unless there is a massive backlash inside the grassroots members of the party who are more conservative. So this is about net zero and socialist taxation of Rishi Sunak's government. Sunak urged to scrap green policies after the Oxbridge Euless revolt, according to Net Zero Watch. Jacob Smog has been out uh, speaking out against um, what the policies of the government, but of course, the policies that are also pushed by the political left. He's saying, well, the political left are championing these policies. Why are we, as a conservative government, following them? And this is the problem. So what has Jacob Smog actually said? I was talking to BBC Radio for today's programme, and he said, you should learn from where the government has done surprisingly well against the, the form book and learn the, that, that, that high-cost green policies are not popular. I think that the government should take away the power for these uh, ULESs, <laughs> which is provided by, uh, for by legislation. You should go with the grain of what voters are doing anyway. Voters are year in, year out, buying cleaner cars with cleaner engines. They're already doing it anyway, yeah. The development of engines in recent decades have been phenomenal. You can do this by uh, osmosis and, and rather than actually hitting by hitting people. Uh, because actually, all these charges uh, hit the late, uh, least well-off motorists rather than the rich motorist who buys a new car every few years Anyway, that's a very good point. Firstly, because of technology and the progress and the, the modernity that we have, a lot of things are already changing anyway. And especially when it comes to electric cars, and i got my own problems with that. <laughs> but this massive push that is dictated and mandated by the globalist elites across the Western world, why should we be a sheep? One of these countries need to stand up to the rest of the Western world and saying, enough is enough. Like what Sweden are relatively doing, Sweden have now scrapped their net zero recycling, 100% recycling, uh, well, recyclable energy uh, targets, because they realize it's just not sustainable. They also went against the global consensus on the lockdown policies. It can happen. You can do it. So all we need is a group of slightly more sound politicians and political parties to get into power, because the system that we still have in place it is still possible to take over and make the right policies. And right now, there's a massive backlash inside the establishment, including civil service. But before it gets more tyrannical, it's time for us to drain the swamp, take over democratically and create better policy programs. Otherwise, in the next few years, it's going to get completely more difficult and impossible to do so. Right now, we're complaining about how at times it seems that uh, democracy in the West is a bit of an illusion. It is to an extent, but it's still there. The fundamentals are still there. If we don't act now, then it will be completely too late within the ne next decade, even probably less within the next few years. And then we're going to wonder, how can we even have someone relatively sound getting elected? Are we actually having ele elections anymore? I mean, it, it, the whole system needs a bit of a rethink. And the only way you could that, you, you can do that is by having new, fresh people to get to get involved. You cannot rely on the existing establishment figures to sit down, have a meeting, and come up with better ideas. Because there's no appetite. Why would they want to change the status quo that they're enjoying the gravy train? So let me know what you think in the comment section if you agree with Jacob Rees-Mogg or Rishi Sunak for some reason. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.